You see, because all of it is a, just think of all of this resistance. It's a smoke screen and an elaborate smoke screen, right? Like if you didn't want somebody to see something, you'd keep running in and, and having a diversion tactic, right? Especially if what the, the thing you were trying to get them not to see was right in front of their face, right? You'd have to actually keep continually diverting their attention so that it doesn't just stop. And that great overwhelming emptiness present itself. The fullest emptiness you'll ever run into. Your own no-thingness. And it's there. But it's not to be feared. No. Why would you fear what you are? Yeah, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I just... And yeah. it's come to me, I think, you know, to, today, yeah. that that is fear is probably the, maybe the final block, you know, the thing that's really... Yeah, that fear comes up because all the, 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 the quick chattering that the mind starts doing, that's just the energy of fear, the energy going mm. up, hitting the mind and turning into thought. That energy can come up and turn into lots of different emotions. But when you get back down to it, it's, it's just that holding... And see, to me, the real impulse towards enlightenment, towards awakening, from the mind's point of view, is totally irrational. Because you're basically saying, let go. And it's saying, but this might happen, and this might happen, and this might happen, and this might happen. And I, I don't know what will happen. And it's like, yeah, you don't know what will happen. There's no guarantees. You can't know. You won't know. That's it. You're asking me to let go into something that I, po- I can't possibly know what it'll be like until I let go? Yes. That's a completely irrational thing to ask of anything, isn't it? Hmm. It's, would be, it would be <clears throat> like, well, let go and here's what you'll find. Hmm. But you can't really do that. That's why the impulse to awaken from the ego's point of view is irrational. That's why often people don't let go until they have to. Maybe maybe ultimately you really have to, the overriding thing then has to be some level of trust that if you do let go, yes. it'll all be all right. Either, so. either, either trust or de- desperation. <laughs> Truly, one yeah. or the other will do. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it was desperation, yeah. right? It was, this might kill me. And the first, the first thought I had when that impulse rose was, okay, but kill me now. Mm. And that's all that was necessary. Mm. It didn't, that thought didn't come from my head. Mm. It came from somewhere I don't even know where it came from because it was spontaneous. That thought mm. wasn't courageous. It was just, it was factual. I will be killed. Okay, how about, but now. Just a total fact. So, but that came out of desperate, I didn't trust because I didn't know what to trust. Mm. It was just, I want freedom enough I must know what the truth is. I must. Even if it kills me, I don't care. I must. So that's what I mean by desperation. You can go by that route if you have that sincere desire where the desire for truth overrides your desire for to exist. Or the other way, as you said, trust. Just a great trust. Which also arises from an internal intuition that intuitive knowing, that's why you're here, right? Mm. There is an intuitive knowing, maybe not fully flowered, fully revealed, but nonetheless it's there. It's an intuitive knowing that, number one, this is the way, this is the direction things will go, and that it's, it's fine. That that's, there's an intuition, everything will be fine. The mind may go in, it might not go fine, it may go terrible, But underneath that, is there not an intuition? Everything will be absolutely fine. And more fine than you can possibly imagine. You can't imagine how fine things will be, how fine things actually are. Well, you're building my trust, you see. Yeah. So maybe it's a 
combination I'll of do desperation and trust. To. Yeah. 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 I'll coax you over the cliff yes, with loving yes, words. Yes. Or I'll threaten you over the cliff <laughs> and push you and see what I don't care. I don't think I care too much. Either. No, I don't imagine so. Don't but don't set it up as some titanic struggle that this event, any event has to happen. You never know mm. that some event has to happen, right? Mm. That you have to sort of break through the big barrier. I mean, you know what breaking through the big barrier is? You break through the big barrier, is it is the realization that there was never a barrier to break through. That's hard to get, though, I think, when you've been struggling with these ideas for, say, 30 That's years. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. So here's the barrier for you, is the letting go for you will be struggling, you, as you said, struggling with these ideas for 30 years. Stop struggling. <laughs> Stop going anywhere. Stop trying to jump through the barrier. Leap off the cliff. <laughs> Take a step <laughs> off the hundred foot pole. Just because that is, that's the leap that doesn't go anywhere. You stop struggling against it all. You stop expecting that anything needs to happen. This is the leap of faith, is it? You could put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, like a, it's either a leap of faith or a leap of desperation. Either mm -hmm. will do. Mm -hmm. Either will accomplish the task. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you're just done with it, you know. Mm -hmm. That's just You just look around and you realize, well, this whole egoic drama, you know, what you used to have, you know, used to be interesting and compelling and like reading a novel, what will happen to me tomorrow and... Will things go the way I want? Will I get the job I want? Will I find my soulmate? Whatever that is. Will this happen? Will that happen? Da, da, da. And then you start to realize, you know, this is like a drama of very little entertainment value anymore. <laughs> it just becomes a horrendous bore. <laughs> Boredom will do it too. You know, just, just <laughs> I'm just really bored with the drama called me. You I can know? relate to that too. Will this novel end in the leap of faith into non-biting <laughs> enlightenment? You know, it's like, oh, that's boring too, actually. That's just another, you know, another part of the story. And then they can be, fold the book, it's not interesting, thank you very much. I'm done. Hmm? It's it's much more like that. It's it need not have any dramatics to it. But nobody can give that part of it to you. Nobody can do that. Wouldn't it be terrible if you had to get it from somebody? Well, you certainly get pointers from people, though, don't you? You do. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Where you get whether they're living teachers or the some sutra or some something that's been written long ago or currently, that's beautiful. Point. Go. Go in that direction. Look in this way. And that's, look in this way. Go in that direction. Don't sit at the pointer forever. And don't sit around debating the pointers. You see what I mean? Because any spiritual teaching that's worth its salt, that's worth anything, is a strategy to awaken. There is no such thing as a true statement about the truth. doesn't exist. Anybody who thinks that what they say about the ultimate reality is true is deluding themselves. You can't. When you get there, you know. Ultimately, you can't explain it. You can point in the direction. That's what I mean. They're strategies, pointers. But what do most people do with the pointers? They collect them. They talk about them. They argue about them. Which ones are more real? Which ones are le less real? Which ones are better? Which ones aren't so good? Which ones they agree with? Which ones they disagree with? They say, you know, doing all of this nonsense, anything, 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 not to just stop treading water on the void and sink slowly, quietly, unceremoniously 
underneath the scent, <laughs> underneath the surface, and be done with it. All the rest is just fit and fury, various forms of water treading on the void. Because as soon as you are still, stillness isn't like, I'm going to be still. Stillness is, I'm not treading water. I'm not struggling. And I'm not asserting. I'm not asserting what I know or don't know. Just that non-resistance, that stopping. And in that moment of stopping, then consciousness returns to itself. Enjoy the ride. It goes absolutely nowhere. Thank you. (laughs) And there's absolutely nothing in it for you. (laughs) That's the fun part. Come on up.